Afternoon. Now, here's the question. What do you want from the COVID inquiry? It's cost us £100 million so far, and it ain't over. We're told it'll go on till 2027. What the heck are they doing in there? Sweden completed theirs back in February 2022. That's just shy of two years ago. So what do you want from this inquiry? So far, we've learned very little. We had the drama and the pantomime of Dominic Cummings claiming Downing Street was like a war zone and citing headless chickens as the order of the day. We've had Hansie Hancock, a man who's usually about as welcome as measles. Surely he was going to shine some light. He was the health secretary after all. But all we learned was that civil servants thought he was a liar and that Hancock himself wanted to decide who should live and who should die. This is beyond a god complex. David Cameron, Pretty Patel, Sir Simon Stevens have all pitched up in the dock, and yet we aren't really any wiser. Aside from some top lawyers wheeling out some vaguely amusing profanity as they quote various WhatsApp groups, what do we know that we didn't know before? Well, today, Sir Patrick Vallance is giving evidence. Surely now we're getting somewhere. This was the chief scientist, the head honcho, as big as it gets. He was there daily for those press conferences. The man was on TV more than Claire Balding, dispensing his wisdom with those impressive graphs. He must have some answers. So far, we've learned that he thought Boris Johnson was an impossible flip-flopper and accused him of bipolar decision-making. Is that all you've got in the tank, Pat? What I think we've really learned so far is that all of these people, from politicians to civil servants, advisors to top medics, aren't nearly as clever and as switched on as we thought they might be. People who got to the top of their game, but with no discernible explanation as to how. We've learned that there was no plan. We've heard contradictions and claims of lies. The fingers have been pointing on a daily basis, but we're none the wiser when it comes to those fundamental questions about a pandemic or the response to the pandemic that desecrated the health and wealth of this country. We are still suffering the effects. I would like to know two simple things. Number one, what was the evidence that this was going to kill more people than it did? And number two, what was the evidence that locking down our country was the right decision? For me, that was pretty criminal stuff. For something that's going to cost you and me several hundred million pounds over several years, I think that's the least we should expect. So I'm asking this question. What do you want from the COVID inquiry? What would you like to hear? 0344 499 1000. That is where you will find us. Joining me now to discuss this and a few of the other big stories of the day, broadcaster Claire Muldoon is back with us. Good to see you, Claire. Thanks, Ian. It is, I mean, to start with, when this COVID inquiry kicked off, I thought, well, this is going to be a bit like Netflix. Get mm. the popcorn mm. ready. Mm. I'm going to enjoy this. I mean, I mean, you know, if you're a political junkie and you do mm. this for a living, this is going to be incredible. Um, but there's been a lot of, well, he said this and she said that and they should have done this and they didn't do that. And I told them to do this, but they didn't do that. They did this instead. A lot of it That's also... That's what we've heard. A lot of it also is based, the evidence is based on contemporary... What's that word? Go for it. Contemporaneous notes. Contemporaneous, yes. Well, I don't think it is that word, but anyway, it's something <laughs> like that. Yeah. Um, and, it, and it's all people that have gone through the daily basis of dealing with Boris Johnson, his cabinet... Chris Whitty, yeah. um, JVT, and now Patrick Valance, and they go home and they make notes. And they, you know, they think, oh, maybe that was the side for today. That was the view I took. Oh, I was right to take that view. Yeah, and then yeah. Patrick Valance has now said, on reflection, some of those notes he has made, he didn't think that the right judgment call was made. Now, you asked your viewers, what do they want from this inquiry? I'm one of your viewers, and all I want to know is why there wasn't a cross-party response to this pandemic from outset, the validity um, of, the in of the injections from the big pharma companies, and also why the need to lock down. And there's other evidence today that would suggest that when the eat out to help out um, was invented by Sunak, Sunak actually knew there might run a risk. And do you remember we had a second lockdown yep. after that? And everyone was asking at the time, well, how does COVID know when to stop and when to start? What dates that will be? How does COVID know that yeah. uh, we're going to be You're in a lockdown? You're flogging some cheap burgers. Yes, yes. So we'll stop giving you the COVIDs yep. because of Rishi's initiative. Yes, exactly. It's never going to happen. It was madness, madness from start to finish. And also, glibly, Boris Johnson's take on uh, the elderly, the OEPs of society, those that have worked solidly all their lives to um, pay tax, bring the rest of us up, and actually now infringing on the baby boomers, 
What evidence did he have to suggest that, oh, well, they'll be all right. I mean, everyone dies at some point. That's actually marked. That was remarked upon yeah. that he actually made comments like that. The only thing I do agree with him with is the young people, yeah, just let them go on with it because they will big build bigger immune systems. And, and what's interesting, as you, as you rightly say, Claire, so much of it, all the kind of interesting stuff, it's a WhatsApp messages. Yes. You know, people say all sorts of things on WhatsApp. Be, by definition of the medium you're communicating on, people are a little more casual with how Absolutely. they speak. Absolutely. Because it's not, it doesn't it's feel not formal, like an official it's not an email. government document. No, it's already. not. It's not. It's so like... this person writing to this person. And I'm I mean, thinking three, we've got 2027. This will be a four and a half year inquiry by the time it comes to an end. Well, I hope Heather Hallett doesn't contract COVID during it and actually well, yeah, well, lives long still enough be alive to do it. To, I was well, say. exactly. I mean, what is the point? The point now we know is not to find the government guilty or not guilty. The point of this inquiry is for better practice if anything like this ever happens again. Yeah, and I get when I think of the lockdowns, I uh, I get angrier today than I was then. The more I look back. Uh, these extraordinary decisions to lock down. And so, I Two think metres it's, distance from people. We knew at the time of, that was incredible. All of this stuff. But I, I, say, I wonder if it's a bit... You know when somebody has a car crash and they say, well, I can't remember it because yeah. your brain kind yeah. of gets rid yeah, of the yeah, trauma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I wonder whether the lockdowns... Some people have suffered a bit of that. that yeah. you can't, it's so shocking yeah. that we locked down an economy. We locked down workplaces. We locked down a we ruined and down wrecked businesses. We locked down child development. Child development, we locked mental down health services. Families. We locked down oppressors, oppressing especially women in this in, in, in these times. It's shocking what this lockdown has done. And during a health pandemic, we locked down hospitals. I mean, you uh, can't make it up, right? No, and also the hospitals. Do you remember all the hospitals, the Nightingale hospitals that were made? Up? Oh, love the Nightingale used. hospitals. Nobody Never ever used. went in one. No one ever meant... No one ever used them. And now why are they not using those to get rid of the yep. um, NHS waiting times? Good call.